Hey everybody, welcome here to another edition of Hometown Highlights. Regular season's winding down. In fact, the last night of the regular season for girls basketball conference titles. A lot of them are in the bag, but still plenty to play for. And with last night's win in boys basketball, TC West was 3-0 in hoops this year against crosstown rival TC Central. The Trojan girls, though, had one more shot to get a win for their school in the regular season tonight at West. And like I said, conference titles, most of them decided West, your big North Conference champs, but this game still means plenty, especially to Central looking for that win. Fourth quarter, we pick it up, and they came out firing. Katie Knudsen was on point tonight, knocks down the three. They lead by 7, 34, 27. Back comes West. Lauren Ellison inside, back to a five-point lead. A six-point run made it just a one-point Central lead, but Knudsen Finding nothing but net tonight, another three there, and then it's Molly Walker top key three, five big points in a row, put Central back up seven. Minute to go, freshman Katie Placic cuts it to a five point lead. Wesso gets no closer to that. Trojans win it, 44-35. These two could meet again a week from tonight in the district finals. Well, speaking of Traverse City, St. Francis boys, they clinched the Lake Michigan Conference title a week ago, but it's always a big game when Charlevoix comes to town, especially tonight's game. Longtime Raiders coach Keith Haskey, now in his second year as Gladiators head coach, his former assistant Adam Wood prowling the Charlevoix sidelines tonight. Lots of action early on. Tanner Cat pretty much quick as a cat with this mm -hmm. steal and score forcing it to the rim and he gets the bucket to go later uh, early on. Charlevoix then has Andrew Plouve nails a corner three pointer. This puts the Red Raiders up five to two early on. But St. Francis comes back on the shoulders of Byron Bull. Aggressive drive and a lay in there for the Glads. Brings him within one. Plouve though, looks like the exact same highlight but it's not. He just has the sweet spot over there in the corner. Gets another three to go. Charlevoix up 10 to four. But here's quick Devin Sheehy. Finds Bulla in the corner for a corner three of his own. Good work there by Bulla and his brothers. They were in attendance watching from the sidelines. Max and Riley, you know Max, a Michigan State Spartan in town watching his brother do some damage. This one would be an incredible thriller in overtime. And the Glads, the home team, ends up winning it 56-55. So could the Charlevoix girls avenge the loss earlier in the first half of our doubleheader in this one. Girls keeping a pretty fast pace as well. Lady Gladwell defense working hard. Cassie Williams to Jesse Michelin. Then Michelin finds Lydia Arthur down low. And it's just defense into offense for the Lady Glads early on. Then Arthur again off of a steal gets another land to go. St. Francis up 10 here, 34 to 24. Charlevoix comes back in a big way, and we mean a really big way, Giacomo. Kelsey oh, way. Uh, they got a lot of That's, ways. They have they have a lot of ways to get and ones. Kelsey way there. Jenna way here with an and one. The aggressive nature of those girls. You know they must have been working together on the rebound drills uh, at the family reunions. But here's uh, another <laughs> way. This would be uh, Anna Way, who gets her baseline jumper to bounce. She's not a fan of the inside, wants to keep to the outside shooting. 36 to 34 at that point, but the Lady Glads, they go on to win this one 54 to 45. Rebounding is the way to success in basketball. Most coaches would tell you. Let's go to Frankfurt, Sutton's Bay in the house for a showdown in the Northwest Conference. Early on, Norseman here, Guy Boshna, puts them up to Frankfurt answers. Talon Bigley, he likes butter, he likes bacon. That's sweet right there, ties it up. We go to the second quarter, Panthers build a nice lead. David Loney, the freshman, 11 to four, and a young fan with her dad, most likely, in the audience there. Norseman coming back, Aaron Orvin gets his own miss and scores it. Suns Bay goes on to win a good one, 48. 46 the final. Hey, it was free popcorn night. Oh. When you ever hear that free popcorn Nothing night at Gaylord St. Mary's? Uh, concession stands were packed. I'm sure a lot of people working hard, including in the lakes and Gaylord St. Mary's. Pick up the action in the first quarter off the miss by a snowboard. Luke Wisniewski gets the offensive board and the putback. 2-0 St. Mary's. Bulldogs answer, though, off the inbounds. Dustin Cochran game tied at two. Next possession, Gabe Nowicki with a nice dish to Michael Stutzman. He pops it in and pops, you know, because it's popcorn. Right. It makes perfect sense. Oh. A few possessions later, Wisniewski feeds <laughs> Matthew Spilski, who drains in Inland Lakes. They would drain this one on the scoreboard. They win by 13, 56, 43. You know, Andrew Keller was there. I, I promise you he got some popcorn. He went through a few bags. <laughs> At least. 
Prep hockey postseason kicks off next week. Pre-regionals are on Tuesday. Some teams still tuning up for the playoffs, including the Northwest Warriors. At home, taking on Lakeview tonight. TC Central, who they'll take on Tuesday. A couple of them in the stands scouting the Warriors tonight. And they, well, they have to be interested in this. Warriors just about a minute in. It's Jake Stricker with the goal. Lakeview would answer. A few minutes later, Luke Samsel, the initial stop in net. The Lakeview scores on the rebound. Tie game when we left it, no final to report there. For all we know, they still could be, could be playing with a 1-1 tie right now. Let's go across center ice. And the North Stars were in action, taking on the Chicago Hitmen. Stars up 4-0 in the second and adding to it, Michael Toman early on with the goal. And just about a minute later, the Stars are shorthanded. No matter, says Mitchell Snyder. Watch him get out on the break. And this is some pretty stuff here. Fair State could have used some of that tonight. 6-0 with that backhand. Eric Rivard, a hat trick for the Stars. And they roll 9-0. I'll show you why Fair could have used that. Well, hey, they had plenty of pep this morning at their pep rally before they left Big Rapids for Kalamazoo. A couple hundred in attendance to see the number one team in the land in college hockey off. Big chance to clinch the CCHA out right tonight. Garrett Thompson to Jordy Johnston right there. one nothing Lee Johnston, that was his team leading 17th goal of the year for the Bulldogs. Later in the period, WMU power play Shane Burschback scores this one, and we're all tied at one. You know what that means. Eventually, we're going to overtime. Yes. Seconds left in the overtime. Ferris forces a shootout, which guarantees them one point. So here's the thing you don't see in hockey too much. They're actually going to be celebrating before the <laughs> shootout because Game's with the one over. point tonight, yeah. they clinched the CCHA title outright. So congratulations to them, but there is still a shootout. Six shooters in for each team, still no goals. That's until Western's Greg Squires finally scores there, and that leaves it up to Andy Huff of the Bulldogs. He's going to get a very good look at this one, a nice backhand that is stuffed by the keeper. Western wins this one 2-1 to one in a shootout. Bulldogs, as we said, though, pretty good night for themselves. They will play at Ferris tomorrow night where the Bulldogs will look to avenge their only home loss of the year. That was to the Broncos. Right. Congratulations to Ferris State CCHA champion.